Today, we're in Aurora, Ontario, a city just north of Toronto. We're visiting a massive property with a mansion unlike anything I have ever seen abandoned. The four-bedroom home is perched upon a hill providing stunning views and is even complete with an infinity pool. So join me today as we enter this fascinating and gorgeous home with the power still on and explore its interesting history and the bitter end a company has in store for it. Okay. Well, this is already pretty nice. Holy crap. It's beautiful. Wow. You don't see uh, murals done like this anymore in foyers. It's quite nice. Oh, this is like, uh, this is probably someone's office at one point. Huh. Wow, they left a lot of stuff behind. They didn't take any of this. Brennan, what do you think? Oh my god! I think of what, yeah. Good lord! Oh, someone was sleeping here. Yeah, I couldn't tell if the writing was from, like, um... Was from the family, maybe like as they knew the house was gonna get demolished. Yeah, you know or... what? Maybe you're right. Maybe they just left the girl draw on yeah. the wall, right? Well, I mean, they let her paint the closets here. Well, yeah, but that's more stylized. I mean, this was. Wow! Look at the ceiling. I know. Wow. It's got like a nice cloud pattern. I don't know though, because this it's like this is hastily put here. I don't know. It's possible that someone was sleeping here. Yeah, the report card. They left the report card. Yeah, they got a bunch of like schoolwork in there. Well, she was doing pretty good. I mean, eighty percent. My God. Huh. I'm gonna I wonder get electrocuted. If, I wonder if we can get a movie to play. Let's see. Now we've been through this before with trying to get the auxiliaries <laughs> to properly. Oh wow. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I wonder if there's a DVD in. It's loading. No, listen to that rumble. <laughs> Unbelievable, there actually what is. The heck is. It's small foot, it's down there. So the history behind this home is actually rather odd. The original home was constructed in the late 60s, but through the decades had many extensions built onto it, likely in the 80s and 90s. While information on this was sparse, the property did seem to operate as a farm with fencing for cows, donkeys, and likely horses all surrounding a barn, which at the time of filming this was already demolished. In the year 2000, a local businessman named Andrew Dunnan purchased the property for $2 million. Over the next few years, he acquired the surrounding land and eventually built a mega mansion on the far east side of his new land. By 2015, it appeared that the home was no longer an animal farm, and the mansion itself was being lived in for short-term uses. In the same year, local community members set up the New Market Refugee Sponsorship Program, a charity effort to raise enough money to provide for a family while they immigrated to Canada. They were ultimately successful in 2017 when a family from Syria had their basic living costs covered for one full year. Now, it's unclear as to what happened behind the scenes with this home, but it's possible that the property owner had donated or leased out the mansion for this cause. So, I can only imagine the delight of a family moving from Syria to this home. But, they would only live here for one year, and soon, the mansion would be vacated and abandoned in 2018. Wow, the murals in this is awesome! The murals in, in this whole house are so cool. Genuinely, like this was a, a uh, 
well-built home. You can just feel everything's very solid. This is a, a proper home. So I assume then this is the, the master bedroom. It's 48 degrees in here. Set to 67. That's funny. Backs onto the pool deck over here. Oh my god, look at this closet area. So that's all a walk-in closet over here. And then it looks like there's another walk-in closet over here. With a dying fluorescent light. Oh wow. This home is spectacular. Abandoned or not, this is genuinely one of the nicest homes I've ever been in. I mean, it's dated for sure, but this is beautiful. Look at this, look at this bathtub with that view. I don't know what happened in here, but something got into the peanut butter here. And obviously there's mouse droppings. So the mice have gotten in here, but also like everything's really dirty in here. There's like water stains all over, which is interesting. Mold growing up on the, the trim here. So this has been abandoned for a while. This had heated floors as well. So this big bed here, just with a couch, sort of torn up. Just looked out onto their infinity pool and then out to the unbelievable view this property has. I mean, this is spectacular. I guess this would have been their formal dining room, it looks like. Again, with that incredible view. Oh, wow. Oh my God. This is getting torn down? Look at this kitchen. Power's still on here with <gasps> everything still here. Is this real? Yep. Wow. I assume then the water doesn't work. No. This island is truly enormous. Can't even fit it in with 16 millimeters. That is gigantic. Yeah, everything's dirty. The wood is starting to warp. But everything, it, it really does look like this has been abandoned for some time. I mean, there's cobwebs everywhere. There's mold growing on the trim. Everything's just dirty and... The paint's coming off here. Bugs. This is extraordinary. Yeah, I mean, like, look at how, how screwed up these cabinets are. Like, even after being abandoned for a couple of years, I mean, it's, they're in rough condition. All of these are, they're, they're in rough condition. Okay, so this <laughs> lavish kitchen, kitchen, uh, goes into this, which I guess is a, a less formal dining room, and then into this, which is like an insane great room, or a family room, or a living room, or whatever you want to call this. This is... This home literally has me speechless. On every single room I go into, it's just... It's dated, and... Like you can see too, the the TVs, they're, this home is sort of stuck in like 2006. By now, I bet you're wondering what happened to this property and why it was abandoned. Well, the reason is all too familiar here. If you recall, last summer I made a video broadly analyzing how developers buy up perfectly fine homes, vacates them for sometimes years, and then develop the land to which they're on. 
Well, this property is a perfect example of that. Mysteriously, this home was sold in 2015 to a company named Shining Hill Estates for just two dollars. Mr. Dunnan, the landowner, seems to have had ties to that company, so its true selling price has been estimated at around 16 million dollars. Shining Hill is now in the process of building out this enormous plot of land that they now own. Constructing phase one of their project with detached single-family and townhomes starting at the high 800,000s. This particular plot of land has been proposed to have 91 single detached homes upon it, likely starting at around a million dollars each. The day we arrived was the beginning of phase two, the next build-out plan. The home down the hill had already been demolished and the trees were cut down, preparing for total land clearing. It's astonishing to me at least that all the history surrounding this incredible home is being stripped away, and soon the mansion will be next. Oh, it really was a greenhouse. This was a legit greenhouse. Huh. One thing that stunned all of us was the fact that this abandoned home had an infinity pool. Now I know these are common in wealthy properties in other warmer climates, but a pool like this in Canada is exceedingly rare, let alone at an abandoned building. So here's the infinity pool that's uh, obviously been covered. And uh, I thought it may have been the developers who did it, but it actually, this wood has been here for a while. This, this is old wood. So I think this has seen a few winters, honestly. And I don't know if this fence dividing the back deck was put up here recently or if it's been here for years as well. I think it might be the latter. While we were there, I had theorized that this pool had been disused for some time, and in fact, I was correct. Looking at satellite photos of the home, we can see that between 2013 and 2015, the pool was being maintained. However, after 2015, the water was collecting algae until the next year when it was drained and a wooden shell was constructed on top of it. These dates actually make sense too, as 2015 was the same time when the home was acquired by that development company. Likely due to local bylaws, a fence was put up abruptly partitioning off the rest of the outdoor patio. And that's where this ultra-luxurious pool has sat ever since, slowly decaying away. What do you think, Brennan? You're, you're the pool expert. How, uh, how much do you think this costs? It's all like smooth cement, which like a pour like this especially like molded as it is, is very, very expensive. Like I said, original estimate, like 60, 60 to 70,000, I'd say for the cement work. But it looks like it's in good shape, like relatively good shape. Like I don't see any major cracks or like major um, like structural flaws other than this tiling here. So this is still salvageable if they wanted to? Uh, yes, all you'd have to do is replace some of the inner tiles there. This, I mean, like the, 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 um... Yeah, this is the ceiling thick they did glass here. right here. And the, uh, obviously, if you don't know what an infinity pool is, the, the water would fill all the way to the top and it would cascade over this and it would look like an infinity edge yeah, and uh, I mean, pool. I can't speak for all the way around, but it looks like the seal here hasn't broken. It does. So. And, you know, there's even, like, a little plant growing right out of uh, the <laughs> tile behind you. All in all, not even not even counting, like, the, the uh, yeah, blocking stone. Yeah, there's probably another here. 10 grand. I'd say, yeah, with, with that included, I'd say maybe, maybe close to $100,000. $100,000 for this, just the pool. And what's super criminal about all this is that they didn't use it. This has been sitting empty for years. When it comes to real estate in Toronto, nothing ever seems safe. Driving around Aurora, the staggering scale of these new suburban developments is mind-boggling. The small city north of Newmarket is growing at a rapid rate and seems to spare nothing in its quest to develop. Perhaps I wouldn't be so bitter if these properties they were adding had any sense of unique design or urban planning. Developers like that exist. There's a great example of a unique, new-build community like that in Niagara-on-the-Lake. But what they're going with here is the opposite of inspired and the cheapest way to make luxury properties. The same homes you're seeing everywhere now. So, who on earth are buying these cookie cutter homes for a million dollars? I have no idea. But I do know one thing, and that's the fact that I would certainly rather spend my money to live in something like this over what they have planned.
It represents something all too common in the area, and it's a sad end to a luxurious and stunning property.